Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and today we are taking a look at the best quality sharpening system I think you can get, the most precision built. And when you are sharpening high-end cutlery, you want a sharpening system that matches the quality of the knives you are sharpening. And this is just that. This is built to the most highest precision. It is very easy to use, and it gives you the best quality edges you can imagine. So first, let's check out the system, how to put it together, how it works, and then let's sharpen a knife. Now really quick, I'm gonna show you how all the parts work and how to put it together, but at the end we will sharpen a knife and I'll show you the results it does give. Now with my system, I got the bare minimum system which comes with the base, you know, the system, the rod, and extra screws, which is really nice in case any of the screws wear out. A couple Allen wrenches, and then this is the rod stopper. Now, first off, you're gonna wanna bend this back. It's gonna lock in place, just like that. And then you flip the tab so it locks, just like that. Now, if you unlock it, unlocks like that. Now, in order to spin the, the clamp, you pull this right here, pull it out, and then it spins, and it'll Lock in place. Very, very simple to use. You do have to have the screws face up to release the clamp because these two screws are what is going to clamp in the knife. Now, when we look at the angles here, if you look right here at the face of it, we have angles. Now these angles range from eight degrees to 25. So the first notch goes from eight to 13. 13 to 18, and then 18 to 25. Now, if you turn it around to the side, and oh yeah, and you lock it in right here on the side. So when you pick your angle you want, you just screw that in and tighten it right in here on the right hand side. So you rotate the left side to go up and down, and then you tighten or loosen it on the right side. Now over here, that is for stone depth. So basically, if you're gonna switch stones, like say from a diamond plate to a venive stone, we have a difference in thickness there. So what you're gonna do is you're going to change this so each one of these is a half a millimeter. Each one of these little lines right here is a half a millimeter. So you click it twice to go to one millimeter. Two millimeters three millimeters, you know, so on and so forth. So that makes the, the stone holder go basically straight up and down. Very, very easy to use. And when you clamp in the knife, you're going to want, I personally just get a driver with a bit so that I already have it set up. I use the Allen wrenches for these little screws and when you put this together, it's very simple. You just push it in, make sure this is unscrewed enough to where it'll slide all the way in and then tighten it up. Now the rod will go through right back here. And then you put your stopper on the back side with the washer. So you have the washer, then the stopper goes right in, tighten it. Now this will stop it from falling out this direction and I just basically rest it just like that when I'm not using it. Now the little Allen wrench that you have will help you to change for stone depth. So you can go right here and you can loosen this and now this will go back and forth. So if you have a difference in stone length or you know, even if it's just a little bit, like the difference between the diamonds and the venives, I do have to adjust this a little tiny bit. But once you find the spot that you want it, you just tighten and then you can leave it right there. And now it's nice and solid. Then you have the spring over here to create the tension. You do want it to be slightly smaller than the, the size of the stone so that you can stretch it and it can create tension onto the stone and hold it in place. Now I recommend getting some captain tape. Captain tape, this works great for your blades when they go into the clamp right here in order to stop the, the jaws from scratching it up. And you don't have to do this. And this is 
probably only going to be used on more expensive knives, but what you can do is you can put a piece of tape right here on the spine. I just cut off a nice little small piece of tape and I put it right around the spine of the knife and it works really good and it prevents any scratching. I can also use it to protect thumb studs or anything like that that might possibly get tapped. So I just go just like that. Then I can put it right inside the jaws. Need to loosen this one up just a little tiny bit. And this, this jaw set holds it very securely. Very solid. So now I would be ready to sharpen. Now some people like to mark the edge with a marker. I personally don't, but you can if you want to. Basically, you would just mark the edge, and then when you drag the, the stone across the edge, you can see right where it's hitting. I have no issue watching right where my grip pattern hits when I scratch the surface of the edge, or when I scratch the stone on the edge. Also, you can use the other side of this stone clamp if you have flat stones that don't have a lip. Like if you notice, these ones have a small lip that fit right into the clamp. But you can use the other side right here for flat stones that don't have that little groove. Now, if you're trying to match the same angle, what you can do is you can just rest it where, you know, it sits, give yourself a little scratch of the stone and see where it scratches. If it's scratching more towards the very tip of the edge, well then your angle is a little too high. If it's scratching towards the back side of the bevel, not the very tip of the edge, but like the back side of it, well then you're a little too low and you wanna raise it up and figure out the exact spot of where it's hitting the, the entire edge from the top of the bevel, so from the very top of the bevel to the very tip of the edge. I am just going to go right around 18 degrees and I, that's where I'm going to sharpen at. You know what, I'm actually gonna go 17 degrees because I like me a good 17 degree edge bevel and that is a good edge bevel for me to sharpen on this knife and I will be reprofiling it rather than trying to match the edge angle that is already on it. I am going to put my own edge angle on this knife. Now if you look here, you can see where my stone is hitting the top of the bevel. And you can see how I have not hit the bottom of the bevel right here at the tip. My goal is to make the entire edge this new grit finish from the heel to the tip. So I want to make sure that that grit pattern covers the entirety of the edge and replaces the old grip pattern with my new grip pattern. Now one little tip and trick, don't let your stone go off of the tip area. I guess that, that sounded like a pun, but it wasn't. Um, you, you don't, when you go too far, what happened, what'll happen is, is your stone will wanna go like this. Don't let that happen. Stop it right there and try to keep pressure on this side of the stone so that it doesn't rock. You wanna keep it nice and flat like that. So do, don't let it go past it. You want the tip of the knife to basically land in the middle of the stone. Let, don't let it go past the middle of the stone. If you let it go past the middle of the stone, like right here, that's when it can fall off. Keep it right there. I'm not gonna let, so right now the tip of the, the knife is not going past the center of the stone. That way I don't have any problems working on the tip. If you let it happen, it will basically round the tip of your knife off and it will not look good. The, the, the most difficult areas usually are the heel and the tip of the knife. So you wanna make sure you hit both, and I can't emphasize this enough, 
Those are the areas that you're going to want to make sure you hit the best before moving along. Make sure those two areas are done very well. If you switch stones and move to the next stone and you haven't hit those areas perfectly, you're going to have a more difficult time the farther you move along through your stone progression. Now these TS Prof diamond plates are really all you need and it comes in a nice pack that you can roll up and this will get you pretty much the only edge you really need because it goes all the way up to a very fine diamond edge which is they say is 1000 grit but it is a very fine 1000 grit. But if you do want to take yourself to a mirror polish, you might want to pick up some Veneve resin bonded diamond stones, the one by six inch diamond plates or diamond stones. They're resin infused diamonds and they work incredibly well. You might also want to get yourself a strop that fits the system from Gridomatic. that's up to you. You can also just get yourself a paddle strop and then, you know, this, you don't really, isn't necessary, but if you wanna do a stropping progression or something like, something like that, you might wanna get multiples of these. But all you really need is a paddle strop and this pack of diamond plates. But right now we're gonna take an edge to the next level and we are going to put a mirror polished edge with the Veneve stones and the TS Prof system. Let's get started. Now I do plan on doing multiple videos on this system, including a tips and tricks video that'll really show you elite levels on how to use this system. But in order just to get yourself a really good edge, understanding the basics on how to sharpen is all you'll really need to know. And that is basically knowing how to create the grip pattern from the top of the edge bevel to the bottom of the edge bevel from heel to toe, creating a burr on the opposite side, flipping it over and repeating on the opposite side and doing that until you get to your last stone. And on your last stone, understanding how to do a burr removal, removing the burr, revealing a very sharp edge. If I work the tip of the area, and I really want to get it, what I do is I never let my stone go like that. What I do is I kind of wipe it right off the edge without going down. So I kind of go like that and lift off at the same time, if that makes sense. And I might touch it up like that a little bit. But I'm only letting the, the closest side of the stone hit. I'm not letting, or sorry, I'm not letting the closest part of the stone go to the tip. I'm letting the farthest part of the stone do the work right there and then I will blend it in because otherwise that part of the edge will have more work than the rest of the part of the rest of the edge and you will notice a difference so you want to make sure you blend it in really nicely even if you do single passes Now once you've created a burr on both sides and your grip pattern is nice and even from heel to tip, from the top of the edge bevel to the very tip of the edge, now you are ready to flip back over to the other side and switch your stones to, a, to your next progression stone. my burr removal after I finished the end of the last side the last burr my burr is going to be on the opposite side so now what I want to do is just do very gentle single passes and I'm gonna flip it back and forth what I'm doing is I'm fatiguing the burr when you go to this high of a grit 
you're not going to have much of a burr at 5,000 grit or 3 slash 2 micron. But if you're using the diamond plates or doing a lower grit, this is going to be especially um, important. But either way, you're just doing single passes on each side, fatiguing the burr, making the burr rock back and forth at the tip of the apex until it pops off. I'm going to finish it up on my strop. Because I'm at such a, a, a high grit right now, this is probably good enough. But if it was a lower grit, I might make a few more passes per side to ensure that the edge is nice and clean. Now I will be taking it out and I will touch it up on the strop just a little tiny bit. I don't want too much because the this type of edge doesn't have too much of a burr and I don't want to over strop and roll the apex of my edge or make it duller than it already is fresh off the stone. That is incredibly sharp. Holy cow, that is very sharp. But I'm just going to barely touch it on some of my, my gunny juice. So I have a leather strop here and my gunny juice. Some of my gunny juice stropping compound. This right here is one micron. I think this one's, yeah, this one's one micron on here. And I'm just barely touching the edge up just a little bit. I do have videos on stropping if you want to learn more about stropping or stropping compounds, leathers, and stuff like that. But that is it. That's all we need on this one. Because th this, man, that is sharp. Holy cow, that is sharp. All right, now let's test this edge on what is basically foam book paper. Oh yeah, very, very sharp. Very, very sharp. Yes, this is incredibly sharp. Let's take a look at the edge now. Now, edges can be very difficult to get on camera, but as you can see, this is an absolute mirror edge. Very beautiful. 